you very much, Dr. Zarani, yeah, for um, the Burmese stand on this issue uh, on whether China is uh, using its uh, uh, debt trapped diplomacy to um, uh, ensnare uh, Asian countries. And just to recapitulate here, you mentioned how uh, the Chinese Communist Party is uh, kind of uh, rewriting history. Yeah, uh, rewriting history and uh, romanticizing history, actually. Yeah, so uh, um, to give Burma uh, a brother it never had. Yeah, <laughs> an imaginary brother by using uh, terms such as uh, birthmates. Yeah, so well, let's move on now to, uh, to the Philippines, where uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Professor Ramon yeah, before that, just uh, uh, just a brief uh, um, outline about uh, Professor Ramon's profile. So Professor Ramon is a full professor at the Center for International Studies at the University of the Philippines, where he lectures on Southeast Asia and Europe, and, a board mem and he's also a board member of FOSI, uh, a Southeast Asian activist organization. Before this, Professor Ramon taught for many years at the Department of Filipino and Philippine Literature at the same university. He obtained his PhD in Southeast Asian Studies from Asia Africa Institute at the University of Hamburg, Germany. He has conducted academic research and fieldwork in Germany, Japan, and Indonesia. A political activist since his days as a student journalist, right after the downfall of Marcus, of the Marcos dictatorship, he has campaigned against the presence of U.S. military bases on Philippine soil and is a fierce defender of human rights. Dr. Ramon is the author of several books, including Translation and Revolution, a study of Rizal's Guillermo Tell. He has also translated Walter Benjamin, Karl Marx, Tan Malaka, Luigi Tukul, and Pramoedia Ananta Toer, from their original lang languages into Filipino. So now I would like to invite Professor Ramon to share with us on this topic. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to this uh, very important uh, uh, discussion. And um, I would like to start with establishing a context. Uh, much has been made about the Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's so-called pivot to China. Uh, this has been uh, much discussed in the international press. But before that, we'd, we'd have to look at the broader context. And this, these, uh, this, is, um, this has to do with the territorial disputes in the West Philippine Sea, with China uh, in particular. So uh, we can go back to the 2016 Permanent Court of Arbitration ruling in favor of the Philippines with respect to some of the areas which China wants to um, claim as its own. And, uh, and uh, in the meantime, many of these uh, islands, and, and um, some of them are not even islands, they were, you know, just, they become artificial islands in the Spratlys and in the Scarborough Shoals. They've been uh, militarized. Uh, many of these uh, small um, islands have uh, been turned into military outposts by the Chinese uh, government. And um, uh, in blatant uh, disregard for any kind of uh, um, concerns of sovereignty with other nations, not just the Philippines, which are contesting the Chinese claim to this area. And uh, one area which is now uh, um, being eyed by China, very close to uh, the Philippine shores in Palawan, is the Reed Bank, which has a lot of gas fields and oil deposits. It is within the Philippine exclusive economic zone. And yet, uh, up to now, this is disputed by China. Now, let's go to uh, Duterte's uh, so-called uh, pivot to China. Uh, before he made this pivot, when he was running for president, he said that he would uh, sacrifice his life to defend Philippine sovereignty in the Spratlys by, uh, by riding um, a jet ski direct to, the, um, to where the Chinese were. 
that was all uh, bluster and uh, it came to nothing. There were other considerations actually. Uh, Duterte has a very, very, very big infrastructure plan for the Philippines. It's called the Build, Build, Build. And as expected, uh, Duterte would need billions and billions of dollars to implement this very huge infrastructure project, which originally consisted of 75 very large uh, projects everywhere in the Philippines. And the estimated cost would be $175 billion. In 2016, China promised Duterte $9 billion in loans, $9 billion in loans to address some of these uh, projects. So when he came back from China in 2016, he said, you know, I'm cutting ties with the United States and I'm going now with China because they're, the money for his big projects would be, fin would be coming from China. From then on, uh, Duterte didn't seem to show any uh, concern about encroachments on Philippine sovereignty. For example, when fishermen would be threatened by Chinese gunboats, Duterte would in fact almost take the side of the Chinese, not the side of the fishermen. And um, not just fishermen, but Philippine Coast Guard, etc., they would be threatened by the Chinese uh, military installations and forces in that area. So this is viewed by some in the Philippines as a sellout of Philippine sovereignty uh, today. Um, and then he even talked about uh, mutual exploration for oil and gas, Philippine and Chinese mutual exploration um, to the most implying, implying that, you know, the Chinese have an equal right to explore and exploit these areas. Um, now, um, so the Philippines entered into several agreements and, and, uh, and contracts and loans with China. And uh, many critics in the Philippines have observed certain aspects or problems with these loans. Some of them say that these loans entail significant political and economic concessions. And broadly speaking, they entail violations of human rights and the rights of indigenous peoples in the areas where these big projects like dam or mining projects will be taking place. There will be a loosening of environmental protection parts. There will be worsening corruption. Patrimonial assets in these contracts, in these loans, can be seized as collateral. Oil resources, for example. And dispute settlement will be governed by Chinese law at the All Chinese China International Economic and Trade Arbitration Commission. So people are saying, you know, that when if you if you dispute uh, certain interpretations of these loans in these bodies, then you're really bound to lose. Another thing about these loans is that they come with a higher interest rate. Uh, that's observed in the Philippines. That, for example, they have interest rates of two to three or even higher percent, while loans from Japan have interest rates of only 0.25% to 0.75%. But despite the uh, lower interest rates uh, for Japanese loans, uh, the Philippine government seems to show a preference for the Chinese loans. And um, one very bitter thing about these loans is that they will involve Chinese-owned contractors and workers, which means that Filipino workers, the Filipino laborers will not be able to have jobs in these construction sites, for example. So uh, the money uh, is borrowed from China, but you're actually paying it back to their contractors and you're paying it back to the Chinese workers. So there, uh, it has been observed in the past that there has been an influx of Chinese workers in the Philippines. And like, like Zarni, I would, I would emphasize very much that we are not against the Chinese here as a people or the Chinese as workers, but we're against these policies which are so uh, imbalanced in favor of a global uh, superpower. Um, one uh, rather, rather uh, interesting article in the newspapers quite recently came out about um, Chinese workers in the Philippines, thousands of them 
who are working in the offline gaming uh, industry. You know, this is illegal in China, but so now it's being, uh, you no, know, these, uh, these uh, operations are being held in the Philippines. Thousands of these uh, workers in these uh, gambling and game operations in the Philippines have been already vaccinated for COVID-19 uh, from last year. So we don't even know how did those vaccines, vaccines come in here? You know, they were smuggled, they're illegal, but you know, it's well known um, that that has happened. There and then, if you look at the Chinese contracts, there is an absolute lack of transparency, strict confidentiality of terms, which uh, critics say goes against the Philippine constitution, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which protects the people's right to know and the right to information about such contracts which the state is entering into. Uh, but predictably, if you look at uh, the reactions from the Philippine finance managers and experts, and also from the Chinese side, all of them deny the possibility of any debt payment default. All of them say that this question of, you know, uh, debt trap, it's just kind of rhetoric, it's just a kind of propaganda that really won't happen. Now, uh, let's go to um, what's happening today with these, uh, with this, uh, with Duterte's build, build project, you know, the, a lot of things have been affected, you know, the economy is contracting. Um, China promised Duterte nine billion in loans, nine billion dollars. Today, only less than 10 percent of the, of the total amount of these loans have been actually uh, delivered. Um, and Duterte's term as a president is supposed to be ending in 2022. So there's very, very little time even to just to, to go uh, to implement all of these projects that he has been trying to work on. Uh, so, uh, and, and some of the projects which have actually uh, received money, like the $60 million Chico River pump irrigation project is facing very stiff opposition from communities, from indigenous peoples who will be overwhelmed by these dams and from environmental activists. So um, 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 there, is, um, there is a lot of um, um, distrust because, because of all of these revelations about these debts, there is a lot of distrust from the, part, from the Filipino public about Duterte's so-called pivot to China. And uh, if you look, but the economic facts on the ground, we can still see that most of the loans are still Japanese. There's a small amount of, from, the, from China. Duterte has been playing off US and Japan against China and Russia with, increase, with decreasing returns, with decreasing returns. And this pivot, it's, it seems now to be just a show. Because as we, as we know in Southeast Asia, the Philippines is a very staunchly oriented toward the United And the Philippine military is just very rapidly pro-American. And any Philippine president who says, you know, we're going to China, we're going to give up U.S. ties, is going to have to face uh, the, the Philippine military. It's, it's completely a U.S. Uh, oriented institution. Uh, um, and that, as we know, there are his tests to balance a lot of things. But uh, he's been saying a lot of critical uh, 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 statements recently about China. And um, so it's somewhat of a theater. It's a kind of a theater. But a theater that may result in actual damage to uh, if, uh, you know, um, things continue as they are continuing today. Now, one factor that, we be, that, that, that has been, you know, that is still pushing Duterte towards China is the COVID-19 crisis, you know. Uh, he says that no country has helped the Philippines in trying to overcome the COVID-19 crisis as China. China has done the most to help the Philippines. And China and, and the Philippines is poised to obtain all of its vaccines, most of its vaccines, from Chinese firms, Sinovac Biotech. Uh, they're planning to get 25 million doses. And as, and, and as we've heard also that 
that uh, the firm Sinof um, already inject already. Um, uh, I don't know how 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 the, those vaccines got here, but the Presidential Security Guard, the security group, the close-in security of President Duterte were already injected with uh, Sinopharm vaccines since last September, since December, September last year. And this is extremely illegal. This is just smuggling of, of drugs which have not been approved by local medical authorities. And they're still undergoing testing even in, the, even in China and other countries like Indonesia. So one factor which is still pushing Duterte towards China is, is, um, is the COVID-19 crisis and probably the, and the kickbacks which may accrue from, from, uh, from buying uh, medical equipment, drugs, and vaccines from China. So uh, I'd just like to end there with uh, this short uh, update on what's happening uh, in the Philippines. Thank you very much.